Hi and welcome to Hi on Coding. I'm your host Mohammad Azam, and in this video, I'm going to introduce you to ASP.NET MVC routing. The best way to understand routing is to see it in action. So let me go to one website. It's called ASP.NET, and ASP.NET is basically an official Microsoft website dedicated to ASP.NET. Now, if I want to search for the pages for, let's say, MVC, okay? So I can simply type over here MVC and enter, and it will take me to the MVC page. So if I want to go somewhere else, like let's say I want to learn uh, Microsoft Ajax. So I'm just going to type over here Ajax, and it will take me to the Ajax website. If I want to learn Silverlight, I'm just going to say Silverlight, and it's going to take me to the Silverlight uh, page. So what is going on is these URLs are hackable. These URLs are informative. It's much easier for me to say MVC rather than okay, uh, it, rather than to say something like uh, category or category.aspx and the category ID equal to 540 something blah blah blah. Now this is much hard for me to remember because it's like ID is 546 and there are some other parameters come into play. This is also not only for me to understand, this is also for Google or any search engine to understand that what this page actually means. So when Google uh, basically indexes its pages, it is uh, very important that the pages are informative, that the URLs are hackable, the URLs are informative. So it's much uh, better to type or to have a URL that redirects or that will fetch up uh, using this particular syntax like MVC and it will be much more informative. So that's much more important than uh, query string and all that stuff. So this is a very simple video and the first thing about routing you need to notice about is the global.ascx file. So let's go over there which, because this is where all the routes are defined. And this particular route is the default route. It takes like a name, so default is the name of the route, uh, controller, action, and ID, okay? So this is the format of the route. So let me start the application. If I go ahead and you know create the application or run the application, you're going to see that the index page is first of all loaded. So I can say, okay, home slash. So when I say home slash, what actually happens is the home is the controller and let me show you where the controller is so if i go to controller folder we have a home controller over here the next part is nothing so we don't have anything over here so if you don't have anything over here by default it executes the index action so if you have a home controller you should also always have a home view folder which contains all the views related to the home controller so I have index over here, and that gets executed when uh, when I don't type anything in the URL. So I can say over here index, and you're going to see that the same view is actually executed, just like over here, okay? So if I say something else like home slash about, okay? So it says, okay, that particular page does not exist, or that particular action does not exist. So I go over here into the views folder and I say, okay, there is an about view. So there might be something missing in the home controller. And I go over here and I say, okay, yes, there is missing. We are not catching that action. So let me go over here and say about. Now you can render a different view if you take, if you give it a view name, because you can give it a view name over here. But if you don't give a view name, the same action view will be rendered. So for index, the view index will be rendered, which is right over here. The secret, the secret page will be rendered. For about, about page will be rendered, okay? So let me build this application and let's go ahead and try it again. And here we go. So we have the about page that is loaded. So this is the about view that has been triggered by the about action. Well, maybe we want something different. Maybe I want something like home slash category slash two. I want something like this. The first thing that you will notice is that we don't have a category action defined in the controller. Okay, so let me go over here 
and define the category action. Then we'll say, okay, public action result. Uh, the name is category and return the view. Now, as I said before, if the name of the action is category and you don't specify the view name, then the category view will be rendered. So let's go over here and refresh the page. Okay, so now let's see what's going on over here. So I'm saying category and it's saying the view category does not exist and you can actually see that where it's searching. First of all, it searches your home folder, which is this one. It searches about, okay, confirm, no, uh, okay, I don't see any category. So it just switches back or switch to the shared folder, which can be accessed from any controller. Um, and then it searches from, from over here in the shared folder. It doesn't found the category view, okay? So what are we going to do is add a view into the home folder. I'm just gonna name it category. So we have a category folder over here. Let's go ahead and refresh the page again. So now the category page is actually displayed. But hey, what about this? What about this? Uh, how do we access this? Before I answer that, how about if we try to access this? So we are now passing a QD string over here with the ID 2. Now there are multiple ways you can handle this. One of the best, one of the good ways is that the category ID, you have to type the exact same name. So you can go over here and type category ID. Okay. So you, you will, one thing you have to notice is that the category ID over here, the naming convention, the exact name is the category ID over here. Okay. So let me go and if I can debug this, you will see that it will then catches the category ID that you're passing. So let me go and I think it's this one and it goes over here and it catches that you are sending category ID number two and you can do whatever you want. But the question still remains that how do we do something like this? See? So first of all, let's go over here and delete or remove this because we are not passing uh, the particular, um, you know, the ID as query string. So, so how do we capture this thing? Okay, it's not a query string, so what is it? So let's go to our global.asx file. And if you see over here, we have a controller name, then the action, and then the ID. So whatever you pass, it will be adjusted in the ID field. ID field of what? ID field of route data. Okay, so let me go over, over here. And now if I want to access the ID, I'm just gonna say ID equal to route data dot values ID. Okay, and I can say, okay, to string, I can convert it to string. Let's go ahead and debug this and I'm just going to say category ID instead of 2 I'm just going to say 299 okay it's, it's firing the category action and you will see that you've got the ID 299 it's part of the route data now if you do want to access it if you do uh, uh, in, the, in the view then you can easily do this by using a view context so view context dot route data and ID of oh, route data dot values dot ID. So let me run it again. And I could say category ID is 877. And you will see that the 877 is actually printed over here. So you can use different techniques of accessing the ID values that you're passing. And in most of the application, if you're building a shopping cart, if you're building any sort of application, you will have this functionality of passing the values. You can use a uh, query string, you can use uh, the route data. I think route data is much more clear because we're saying, okay, category, and then 877, that means the category ID is 877 that we're going to fetch. So this was just a very brief introduction to uh, 
is B.NET MVC routing. One last thing I would like to point out is if you haven't visited the website, I will encourage you to visit highoncoding.com. And if you're there, how about consider some donation for High on Coding? You have to realize that each video takes about 60 minutes to record and then extra time to uh, convert it into a HD format. And we are always looking for donations. So if you can help us out or and, and there are different options that you can use, one-time donation or monthly, and you can actually see the amount is pretty low. And uh, I will be, or the whole High on Coding staff will be producing uh, very good content uh, compelling content so we really need your donations so thank you very much and stay tuned on high on coding for more screencast